Imagine walking into your office through heat and traffic in peak summer only to find out that there's been a power outage in the entire building. Everything stops from the AC to the coffee machine. One hour passes, then two, three, eight. There's complete chaos. Now imagine that happening not just in your office, but across the entire country. Emergency wards, classrooms, transport networks, everything comes to a halt. It actually happened across Europe earlier this year. On a warm April evening, the light suddenly went out across Spain, Portugal and even parts of France. Hospitals switched to backup power, trains halted mid-journey and millions waited in stunned silence for the hum of electricity to return. It wasn't a cyber attack. It wasn't a foul play. It was simply the grid collapsing. Too much reliance on renewables and too little backup power. And sitting thousands of kilometers away in Delhi, Indian power planners and engineers were watching closely, asking themselves, if this can happen in Europe, how safe is our own grid? With rising consumption, ambitious targets and a race toward clean power, the question isn't about safety, it's about our future. Let's break down India's energy prospects, challenges and the road ahead in today's episode of Inside Out. India has done something incredible over the last decade. Solar panels stretch across deserts, windmills line the coasts. By mid-2025, half of India's installed power capacity come from non-fossil sources, way ahead of schedule. But here's the catch. We may generate from renewables, but we still depend on coal. Nearly two-thirds of our electricity still comes from thermal power. And that's the problem. Solar and wind are great until the sun hides or the wind slows. So, to keep the lights on, India needs a steady, clean power source that doesn't depend on weather. And that's why India is turning back to nuclear power. Before going ahead, let's first understand what nuclear energy is. Simply put, it's the energy released when atoms split, a process called nuclear fission. Unlike coal or gas, which burn fuel to create heat, nuclear power plants use uranium atoms. When these atoms split inside a reactor, they release huge amounts of heat without emitting carbon dioxide. That heat turns water into steam, which spins turbines to generate electricity, just like other power plants, but with a much smaller carbon footprint. And unlike solar or wind, nuclear power doesn't depend on the weather. It runs day and night making it stable, reliable source of clean energy. The catch? Handling radioactive waste safely and building plants with strong safety system is crucial and expensive. Well, do you remember 2008 when the Prime Minister Manmohan Singh faced a non-confidence vote over the US-India civil nuclear deal? He told Parliament, this is not about me. This is about the destiny of India. That deal opened doors for nuclear cooperation, but domestic politics, safety fears and costs meant India's nuclear dream never quite took off. Today, all of India's reactors together produce just 8.8 .8 gigawatt. That's barely 3% of our total power capacity. Now, the Narendra Modi-led government wants to push that up to 100 gigawatt by 2047, a 12-fold leap in just two decades. And nearly one-third of that, officials says, could come from small modular reactors, or SMRs, compact factory-built nuclear plants. So, what's the big deal about small? Unlike mega nuclear plants that take a decade or more to build, SMRs are designed to be plug and play, quicker to assemble, safer to run, easier to place closer to cities or factories. India's first step in that direction is something called the Bharat Small Reactor or BSR, a 220 megawatt version based on our proven PHWR design. It's not modular yet, but it's reliable, scalable and homegrown. But here's the twist. Private companies can't own nuclear plants in India. And once that's up, the plan is to transition to the Bharat Small Modular Reactor or BSMR, the next-gen version that will use modular construction and advanced safety systems. So the nuclear power cooperation of India 
NPCIL has floated an offer. Private firms can invest in BSRs and use the electricity, even if they don't owe the reactors. That's a big shift, an experiment in public-private partnership for nuclear power. But not everyone's convinced yet. NPCIL's 90-page proposal triggered 700 questions from companies about costs, financing and safety. Still, officials insist these are just growing pains. And remember, this is not just limited to India. But every global nuclear leader, from France to Japan, had to go through these teethening phases. Right now, SMRs are operational or in construction in barely a dozen countries. The US, UK, China, Russia and Canada. Western vendors see India as the next big market. But former Atomic Energy Commission Chairman Anil Kakodkar has a warning. They're all descending on India and trying to brainwash us because while SMRs are a buzzword in the West, many of those countries just want to replace old reactors, not power new growth. India, on the other hand, needs to power entire new cities, industries and manufacturing zones. So rather than buying the West's modular dream, India wants to go desi, build its own small reactors, refine them step by step and scale up. But in all of these theories, there lies a big problem, fuel. To hit 100 gigawatt, India would need around 18,000 tons of uranium a year, roughly third of world's current output. Well, that's huge. India plans to quadruple uranium imports by 2033 just to meet interim targets. But by the late 2040s, we couldn't be consuming up to 10 to 12 percent of global uranium trade. And uranium isn't cheap anymore. From $24 a pound in 2020, it shoot up to over $84 a pound in 2025 as 30 countries plan to triple their nuclear capacity. Experts like Anil Parab of LNT and Robindran Nath Sachdev warn that India must build its own supply chains or risk energy insecurity and geopolitical pressure. That's where thorium comes in, India's secret card. We hold world's largest thorium reserves, enough to power nation for a century. The late Homi Baba's three-stage program was built around this. Stage one, use uranium. Stage two, breed new fuel from it. And stage three, switch to thorium. India has been stuck between stages two and three for decades. Fast breeder reactors are delayed and our advanced heavy water reactors, the AHWR, that wasn't meant to bridge the gap, has been in design limbo for nearly 10 years. China, meanwhile, has already built the world's first thorium-based molten salt reactor. So, if India wants energy independence, thorium is the final frontier. But getting there means speeding up R&D and cutting red tape. In Tamil Nadu's Idin Thakarai village, memories of 2012 still sting. Police crackdowns on villagers protesting the Kudankulam nuclear plant. Anti-nuclear activist S.P. Uday Kumar says, even a normal functioning plant is a disaster in itself because of radiation exposure. Public fear remains nuclear energy's biggest challenge. All it takes is one accident, even abroad, to harden public opinion here and derail billions in investment. If India fails to scale nuclear power in the next three decades, it won't just face blackouts it could face industrial decline. Our energy demand will double by 2050. But even then, thermal power is projected to dominate. Carbon emissions could peak by 2040, unless nuclear helps bridge the gap. As R.K. Singh, nuclear scientist, puts it, if we don't take steps now, we risk falling far behind. Because this isn't just about clean power, it's about self-reliance, competitiveness, and India's place in global economy. For decades, the world dictated how India could access technology, fuel, even finance. Now, for the first time, India is rewriting that script with reactors that are smaller, safer and smarter. Small may just be the new big, because the future of India's growth might depend on how we master the atom again. Thank you for watching this segment. If you found this breakdown useful, do not forget to hit like, subscribe and tell us in the comments. Do you think India's nuclear dream will finally take off this time? Meanwhile, catch the whole story in the November edition of Outlook Business Magazine.